we will contact them and we will let you know. This is the PCB and there is just no way to make this thing fit on it. The PCB is just too much bigger of the block, like it's clearly there's no way of making it fit. So it's super annoying because we have issues. So if they send us a new block, we can just mount it and go ahead. If they don't send us a new block, we would basically have to mount the cart back and use it air cooled which is gonna be pretty big inconvenience because mounting the card back a while and it's pretty annoying. So, and uh, they're not sending us a new block, unfortunately. We are in the midst of holidays and they are busy. So we have to basically modify the loop, but really just uh, modify the GPU attachment and just do a CPU only loop that to later on can be expanded to the GPU. So unfortunately we have uh, removed the pads and paste from this. So we have to do a full repad, full repaste of this poor Founders Edition RTX. 3090, but we will do this later on and we will now focus just on making the loop. So fittings, tubes, bending it and testing everything out. So let's go. Okay, time to open up the fittings and now they give us angled and flat fittings. Now these, like the rest of the kits, have like a super premium feel to be honest. Now let's see if I manage to actually unbox them. Yes. So how this works is they are compression fittings. So you just tighten the tube in there and they screw in directly in the component. So it will make for easier bends because uh, we are doing a hard line water cooling thing. So these tubes do not flex. So if you want to bend them, you have to use a kit like this one we have here, which is also from Raijin Tech, where you basically, I, I will just quickly show you. Basically you put this thing inside the tubes. And so even if you bend it, it's not gonna bend the, the wrong way, if it makes sense. So this is what this is about. And then you can just use these to basically just avoid doing the bends. So with this kit, you won't even need to really do bends, which is what scares most people in water cooling. Because if you are good and if you plan everything right, you can just do the bends with the fittings and have a very geometrical look, which is what we want today. So guys, step one is to remove those things from the radiator before putting the fittings, which is super easy. The water block is actually already without, now we have to take out these from the rod. Okay, so first issue. Now again, we are bypassing the GPU, so we, we are short in terms of fittings. So we either do some very complicated bends to connect this to this, or as we are planning to do, we integrated with a bit of soft tubing. So I had some old hardware and we're just gonna use this one to make sure that uh, everything is connected. So these, um, they are standard. So basically any one of these will fit on any loop. So now let me show you. This one is going straight there. And now from here, we're just gonna put uh, basically a soft tubes that goes into the actual rod right here on the back. Okay, so we made this tiny add-on with a soft tube, it was tricky, but uh, it shouldn't leak and it should truly help uh, with the loop itself. So I'm really happy. So the most difficult part is the cutting and measuring of the rigid tubes. Now here at the Motoring PSUs, we do things, you know, a bit different than most people. So I just eyeballed the dimensions and we'll see if it works. And then we have this uh, very cute tube cutter, which uh, should work via rotation if I have seen the tutorials right. So if I just uh, do this, it should basically cut my tube just nicely and then you just uh, tighten it more and then rotate it more and it should come out perfectly flat and it did so that's nice so first measure as you can see we're off we're off by not long actually so we need to cut it some more and we will do it Okay, it seems like we did some decent eyeballing because it is right where it should be, as you can see. Okay, so we have the loop ready to let me know if you like it, by the way. And it's now time to fill it. So they also give you fluid with this kit. And this should be basically just distilled water. Okay, no, it's uh, water and uh, glycol. 
which is actually much better for cooling. And they also give you this tool to fill it. So now we're gonna open it, fill up our tool, and go ahead and fill up the loop. Now, you should not use the power supply connected to your motherboard, but we are using it because I'm lazy, but you really should not, so. Okay, so you should also use something to be able to do this uh, nicely, but I trust my skills. Okay, so step one is to basically just fill it for a while. Then we are turning on the pump and seeing if we have any leaks. We should also place like a few towels and stuff to this, you know, in case something goes wrong, but we are not doing it. Again, do not copy this. It's just bad, very bad um, example on my side. No, a bit is going outside. This is non-conductive uh, material, but it will get conductive quickly. But at least if a few goes over the motherboard right now, it's not gonna destroy it. Okay, here we are filling it again. Now something else which you should do is just uh, turn on the loop with little water so that if there is a leak it's not disastrous. But again we are not doing that because I trust my skills. But yeah, the name of the channel is I'm watering PSUs, let's hope I don't water my PSU today. It wouldn't be a good day to be honest if that happened, but uh, okay, it's nearly enough water to truly check it. The key is like a lot of the water goes in the radiator so you want to be sure that at least half the rod gets filled to really test it if it makes sense. So with my ends still wet, we can try, see if we have any disaster for the loop. And it's actually running flawlessly, even though the RGB is going a bit crazy, but uh, RGB aside, it's running nicely. Now we just need a bit more water in it, but it is indeed running nicely. So this is fully successful. Let's see if we get B2, D6, yeah. Motherboard is also working, so this is very nicely uh, a success, but let me turn, let me change this RGB quickly because we cannot live like this. Okay, so everything is running nicely, we have no leaks, even though my behavior wasn't truly really careful. So now I was rewarded for my uncareful behavior and, and I will now behave even worse. But with that said, we just have to fill out the loop properly and uh, test out the PC, I guess, and also, yeah. Uh, remount that RTX 3090. Okay, so at this point, it's just a matter of putting the GPU in the loop. Now, it is gonna be quite the tight fit, unfortunately, because as you can see, the band is relatively close to where the GPU goes in. But with this Fudge Edition, which we remounted, unfortunately, with new paste at least, it should fit by a few millimeters. So let's go ahead. Now these, you should theoretically take out before you actually put the motherboard in because it's actually very easy to break one of these chips on the board and that would actually render the motherboard unusable. However, I do not learn from my mistakes. So here we are just slowly but surely breaking it free. You just have to do this for long enough and it will eventually come off. So with everything freed up, GPU. Now, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit. Uh, so one might think we did the band wrong, but actually it's just a matter of, uh, you know, kind of being smart with it, I guess. And we have to let this side over here go in first. This will free up some space. At this point we just rotate it a bit, a bit and we slot it where it belongs. Okay, okay, first boot. Let's see. Well, it does look nice, but let's see if we get a signal, which is probably the most important part. So right now we have a CPU code, but it's still booting because remember, it is an AMD platform. They have longer boot time. So I think we're gonna be able to get it. Also, let me know, first look, do you like the aesthetic of it? With all this gray and black. A6 should be still a RAM related error. Matter of fact, it's giving us a boot error. So let's see. Okay, clear CMOS later. We have a signal. We are in the BIOS. It's just a matter of installing Windows and uh, seeing if it actually performs nicely, if the temperatures are in check and everything. But so far, it is a success, guys. And I'm very happy with it. As you can see, we've had a few issues along the lines. Um, it's full of water everywhere. So, yeah. And we have the build finished. Now, guys, this was not an easy build. 
I've done worse, to be honest, but it was definitely a messy build. However, I take responsibility at least partially because I have used these 90 degrees fittings, which, I mean, they give you in the Scylla kit, so one is, I guess, supposed to use them. Uh, but, you know, with rigid tubing, if you're good, you can also just bend the tubes with a heat gun, and you would have actually avoided many of the issues we've had here today. The problem, like, if I had to make really one big piece of criticism to Ryzen Tech because the whole thing was easy to build but the issue was that the compression in the fittings wasn't quite enough I mean I've built other PCs in the past like the graphene cooled one some EK ones and uh, even though the materials are definitely better here uh, there you can get just better clamping so if you close down a tube it will never leak on you whereas these ones they leaked on me like three times. I have part of the footage of unfortunately I, I don't have like the water going everywhere but it was really messy and the water went like literally under my desk. It was not fun, but hey, at least we could uh, uh, demonstrate that uh, if you turn on a PC that's wet, it will still work because this is not like normal water. And also thanks to all the leaks, we could actually try the new God Chiller Astro Fluid, which I have to say it actually looks really, really nice. In the end, we did a mix between their ghost white and their purple fluids. Uh, they don't officially say you can mix them, but they have done it in the past as well in the One Piece build. And I think if you want a high performance fluid, the Gochiller is definitely the brand to go with. Now, the fluid included with Ryzen Tech, I had the chance to test it before everything went wrong. And that one was really good as well. We did uh, actually pretty much the same performance. I think the Gochiller fluid gave us uh, two degrees better, but uh, you know, it's very close and it's not really gonna make a difference. We also had to like insert a portion of soft tubing to be able to connect the pump and reservoir combo to the top radiator. That wasn't really fun but I think it came out looking nice as well. So, since it was so tricky to get the build running, please drop a like and a sub to support the channel. So, all in all, do I recommend the Scylla kit? Yes, but uh, <coughs> maybe, like without maybe, just get the soft tubing version, it's probably gonna be better for everybody. Uh, if you get the hardline water cooling one, just be careful, if you do it properly, it's gonna be perfect, but know that it's not gonna be easy, okay? I just wanna make this clear, you know, it's better than the Corsair stuff. The build quality is overall better. I do recommend it, but it's not easy to build. Just because of this fitting issue, honestly, if they fix it, it's gonna be fine. Also, uh, the whole issue with the graphic card, we are still resolving it. Apparently, it is just a matter of the founder's PCB being bigger, so that one wasn't compatible. The water block felt really premium. It really looked nice, it was heavy. I'm sure, like, if you get it for a card in which it will work, it's gonna be great. Unfortunately, I couldn't test it today, but I, I am very positive that it's gonna be a very good performer. So I'm very impressed with Ryzen Tech and the case. This is a separate uh, topic, obviously. The case was great. Honestly, the Payan C7, I can definitely recommend. It's an aquarium case, it's small, it's compact. You can fit 360mm all-in-one radiators. As you can see, it's very water cooling friendly. All in all, I think it looks nice. So that one I can definitely recommend uh, with ease. As well as Ryzen Tech fans, I was actually very well impressed by their fans. They look nice, perform very nice, and more importantly, they're very quiet. The beauty of going with a fully custom PC like this is you cannot hear it. And another good thing about the water block was, yes, I did have countless issues with the GPU because Founders cards are not easy to disassemble, so we had to mount it back. As you know, dismounting Founders card is never fun, but at least we did a full repaste and repad, as I do recommend in my repadding guide on the channel. And we also dropped a nice 15 degrees from the core clock in the 3090. So now everything is running cool and quiet. Speaking of which, with all the premise done, let's focus on the performance which is probably what you guys care the most about now cooling performance this thing is absolutely insane i did make a little spoiler about the cpu temperature but the cpu is staying at around 60 degrees all the time only the most extreme workloads make it go up in the 70s but it's very rare and all of this while having a very quiet fan speed in which you never hear the fans. This is the beauty of custom water cooling and this is why doing a custom loop is a great idea. So absolutely the performance are great and after the repaste, same can be said for the GPU. We saw a maximum of I think 68 degrees, so under 70. Score wise, we run Firestrike and as you can see the 3090 is still the card we recommend. Even now, with the RTX 4070 Super out, I still think the RTX 3090 is better value than the 4070 Super. So I do recommend you buy this. And I especially like the founders, to be honest. The Ryzen 5000, they're still doing nice. Obviously, uh, Intel really took the lead uh, with 12th gen and uh, onwards. And so did AMD with Ryzen 7000. But to be honest, if you're playing with a 3090, 
you're not gonna really see the difference. I think you need the higher tier if you go with like a 4080 and higher. From 4080 and higher, I would definitely get a different platform, but up to a 3090, 1500X that we have in today's build is perfectly fine. And that was demonstrated by the games because we tested Apex Legends and we were doing 300 FPS all the time, even in landing. Now we have the Final Fantasy event and it was fun to play and very smooth uh, on a 240Hz 1080p monitor competitive settings you can just max out the game at all times and the same can be said for warzone because we tested that and there we were doing around 240 fps now obviously warzone we saw up to 280 fps but warzone is very tricky meaning that in some areas there's nothing you can do you will sit deep to like 200 190 fps it's normal uh, but all in all performance was absolutely great you can play all the competitive titles and you can play also just uh, single player very good to look at games with ease with a pc like this so guys let me know if you like the video please drop a like and a sub to support me my struggle and hopefully i will see you guys in another one goodbye